what if I told you that there is one option in ACC setup menu that has the potential to massively improve lap times without any major drawbacks or trade-offs? Sounds too good to be true, doesn't it? But I promise you this underutilized option actually exists and I'm gonna show you what it is and how you should optimize it. Hey guys, GT Racing here and today we are gonna investigate one of Assetto Corsa Competizione's setup mysteries, the brake bias. So let's start off with a bit of theory to better understand what we're trying to achieve by adjusting this value and what we need to consider. Like all things in racing, our main objective is to get as close to the limit of grip as possible. For the braking, this just means applying as much pressure on the brakes as possible without your tires locking up. Now I am aware that most GT3 classes or all GT3 cars in ACC are running with ABS enabled, but the concept behind adjusting a brake bias doesn't really change. So let's just pretend ABS doesn't exist for these cars to make things a bit more clear. This also allows us to reformulate our target to we are trying to get all four of our tires to lock up around the same time. Because if one pair of tires, and it doesn't matter whether those are the front or the rear tires, locks up first, means that you reach your maximum braking capabilities without utilizing the maximum amount of braking performance that your car would theoretically offer if you would adjust your braking bias correctly. Hang on a minute, so if you want all four of our tires to lock up at the same time, wouldn't the solution just be to set the brake bias to 50% because you know the braking force is distributed evenly amongst your tires? Well, while that thought goes in the right direction, it's not quite that simple. But before I'm going into details, I just want you to know that in Assetto Corsa Competizione setup screen, the brake bias is a singular value between 0 and 100. And this singular value is basically equivalent to the amount of brake force in percent that is distributed towards your front tires. And while this might sound a bit complex at first, it's basically just as simple if the number says 54, then 54% of your total braking force is distributed towards your front tires and the remaining 46% are distributed to your rear tires. So. With that out of the way, let's take a look at this beautiful picture. And the first thing we should be able to notice is that the Sonda has an absolutely gorgeous livery, but that's besides the point. So why adjusting a brake bus isn't that simple is because every car has a so-called center of mass. And why that is important is because if you're braking, the mass of your car is shifted forwards, which basically means while your car still weighs the same amount as if you weren't braking, the mass of your car is shifted forwards in a way where the front of the car now presses down towards the ground with more force than the back, which means your front tires have a greater amount of grip than your rear tires. And the position of the center of mass basically tells us how much more the front of your car is pressing towards the ground in comparison to your rear. For a more detailed explanation, we would need to dive into physics and need to cover the area of linear momentum and related stuff, but that is way out of the scope for this video. So in a nutshell, there are a lot of factors that determine where the center of mass of any given car lies. But the biggest factor that plays into this is the position of your engine. So if you have a front engine car, then your center of mass will probably be somewhere in the front area. If you have a mid engine car, then your center of mass is going to be somewhere around the middle of your car. And if your engine is placed towards the rear, then the center of mass is also going to shift back. And now, as a rule of thumb, that doesn't require you to have any physics knowledge whatsoever. Just imagine that the center of mass of your car acts like a seesaw. And the braking force that shifts the weight forwards is applied upwards at the very back of your car. So what this means is if your center of mass is located further back, the front of your car won't be pushed down as much as if, let's say, the engine of your car is positioned at the front of your car, or like the center of mass is positioned at the front of your car, because that is how leverage works. Now, while that is not 100% technically correct, it should be sufficient to get a point across without having to dive into physics, as I mentioned before. So, coming back to set the course of competition, what you should be doing in order to correctly set your brake bias is to just create a practice session, drive one lap, and then reduce the value for the brake bias in your setup screen by roughly 1%. And you just keep doing this until your car starts to get slightly twitchy under braking. Now, when that happens, your brake bias is actually distributed in a way that your rear tires are locking up before your front tires. So your front tires still have grip, but your rear tires don't. 
and what this does is basically just emulate a handbrake and I guess we're all aware that handbrakes aren't really ideal for the braking process before cornering. But yeah, that is basically the process you stick to. And if you do everything correctly, then you should notice some gains of around 1 to 3 tenths per lap, depending on the length of the circuit of course. But I can confidently say that for example at Spa, I was able to gain 0.3 of a second just by adjusting my braking bias correctly. And this is also the main reason why I came up with the idea for this video. And additionally, adjusting your brake bias literally only affects your brakes and your braking. Like for example, if you were to change the rear wing of your car, then you're messing with the aerodynamic balance of your car, which might cause some understeer or oversteer, and also means that you might need to adjust your mechanical balance of the car. You are ARBs. Just messing with the brake bias doesn't give you this headache, which is pretty nice to be honest. So yeah, that is pretty much it for this short guide. If you did enjoy it or could get something useful out of it, you could leave a like or also a comment stating how much time you were able to make up just by applying what I mentioned in this video. You could also consider subscribing to this channel for more sim racing content. And with that said, I'll catch you in the next one. Have a good one. Cheers.